Hey guys, this is the Dr. Eric Nyquist. I'm here to talk to you about image optimization and both from a conceptual, theoretical, and a manual uh, approach. And unfortunately, in the industry of today, there's a lot of misinformation about what is a good machine. Um, there are many factors that go into image optimization, getting a consistent, regularly attainable, solid diagnostic image quality in every type of animal from a ferret to a Great Dane and everything in between. Most of it is physics. A lot of it is software. You have the hardware that pushes out the echoes and retrieves the echoes. The, more, the bigger the hardware, typically, the more powerful the machine, the, more, the greater the depth that you can image from, and the greater you can receive a better, uh, a better image quality. There's the software. Software can be done by multiple uh, types of people, whether they're engineers or maybe clinical sonographers consult, and maybe they don't. Is the image too soft? Is it too hard? There's all the presets that go into the software. There's a whole combination of events that happen before you actually get a machine in front of you and put a probe in your hand and start scanning, okay? So all things being equal, um, you need to choose a category of machine for the type of animal that you are going to scan. If you're scanning a ferret, you need high resolution probes. You need a, a 8 to 12, 8 to 14 megahertz. If you're scanning a Rottweiler, you need 5 to 8 megahertz, uh, or 4 to 8, 5 to 8, something along those lines. And then everything in between. So you need a probe for the right animal. You need the machine with the acoustic power. You need the software that's friendly to your eye. You need the presets that are clinically supported. All of those things go into obtaining optimal images. We're going to start with a simple simple uh, scenario that you can do uh, in testing your machine, whichever machine you're looking at. Okay, so the depth on ultrasound machines is measured in centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to convert over to, uh, over to inches. So three centimeters is a little over an inch. Okay, so if you have an image quality, I'm not talking about the depth that will show up on your screen because you can get 10, 12, 14 centimeters of depth, but it's only um, the resolution is only diagnostic in a lot of machines to three to four centimeters in the really cheap machines. So three to four centimeters is an inch. inch. So if we take Kira here, the 60 pound Labrador, an inch is going to get you resolution to about here. Okay, well, what sits here? Intestine. So if you put the probe on, you're going to see some intestine, but you're not going to see all the other structures in the dorsal abdomen unless you push okay and make everything one centimeter so if you have a one or one inch if you have a one inch penetration on your machine then you have to push everything to one inch to make it diagnostic you may get two three inches of depth or three to five to seven centimeters of depth but the resolution is only diagnostic for the first few centimeters in the inexpensive machines or older machines okay now you go to the mid-level machines and they're five centimeter depth machines where they are they have a resolution that's diagnostic to five centimeters again the depth may go to 12 to 14 centimeters but when you're trying to diagnose something the best resolution is in the near field right and so two inches roughly five centimeters gets to about here so if you push now yeah you can get to a kidney but you lose the resolution Okay, that's just physics. It's the acoustic power of the machine. Now you go to a machine that scans to seven, eight centimeters of depth. That's the next category. Typically the best of mobile scans six to eight centimeters of depth. Now you're at three, centimeters, three inches. Okay, totally different ballgame because three inches you can get to everything you need to from different angles, which is what we do in mobile. Right. So when I scanned for years before the up until the last five years, I scanned with a five centimeter machine. So if you look at any of the images that I've produced or published, look at the depth, it's five centimeters. OK, whereas now we're working with seven to eight and nine centimeter depth machines. And that is not depth, real depth. That is diagnostic depth. They're two different issues. OK, so when you're scanning with your machine, you want to look at what you can make out at what depth. So typically $30,000, $25,000 machines are going to be five centimeter machines. You're going to have decent acoustic uh, power and resolution at five centimeters. Maybe there are exceptions. Prove me wrong. Try it yourself. OK, you go to forty thousand dollar machines. They should be scanning with good, solid resolution at seven to eight or even nine centimeters of depth. OK, you get what you pay for. It's physics. And then 
it, so it's physics and hardware, and then it's software, how well the software is made, how well it is tested, then it's presets, then it's support, and all those other things that go into making acoustic uh, power that allows you to have good solid resolution the deepest depths possible. Okay, so imagine translate that into real life and your only your best decisions can be made only on reality. And in real life, we have a ferret to scan one minute, we have a body score five out of five Rottweiler to scan the next. You need a machine that's gonna cover all of that. If you are sitting in New York City and you scan Bichons all day long and, and maybe Beagles and that's about it, different story. You can get by with a lesser machine. But if you're going to scan across the board, whatever comes across the probe, you need a machine that is going to have the hardware, the software, the presets that are clinically made, and people that are going to support you. Okay, guys, so now we're in our, our virtual uh, setting here, which we use for our virtual labs when we're scanning one-on-one -on -one or as a group. And so I'm going to show you how to do some quick image optimization. Now, all probes being equal. So this is a microconvex probe. It scans from three to 10 megahertz. So it's a nice spectrum. Um, and that's the frequency. So I have to have the acoustic power of the hardware to be able to push through uh, this probe to give me the penetration and resolution that I want. Um, and, and so uh, if we want to penetrate deeper with the same machine, we use a lower megahertz probe, a, a three to five megahertz macroconvex or even a microconvex that will give us that sort of penetration. Um, if we want higher resolution, we use a linear probe and, and so forth. So there's a, a there, there are a lot of factors that go in. The probe is only part of it. You need the acoustic power behind the probe to be able to penetrate in the areas that you want. This is especially important with doing echoes and, um, and Doppler. You need good power penetration because Doppler is very, very sensitive to artifact. And you will be able to need a machine that can push through that artifact. Otherwise, you're going to get sloppy Doppler. And that doesn't look good, and it's non-diagnostic. So let's say... Let's take this. This is Kira. She's a 60 pound Labrador. And as we see on the screen here, I can scan her spleen nice and easy. And look at the depth here. I have 10 centimeters of overall depth, right? But my diagnostic quality right in this position is about seven to eight centimeters. Okay. Without even pushing, without even doing anything. We go up to the liver here. And so if we look at the liver, she has a little bit of a beat up liver, a little lumpy, a little gallbladder edema. But you can see down to the diaphragm, which is about 10 centimeters, I got pretty decent solid resolution all the way down to 10 centimeters with a microconvex probe. Okay. This is what you want. This is the best of mobile. This is a mobile machine. You can put it on a cart and call it a fixed machine, but it's a best of mobile machine. And so you can see you get image resolution at 10 centimeters. All right. So that's my starting point. All right. And the more artifact you get in your view, the less you're going to have depth penetration. Because look at this view in the middle of the abdomen here, middle cranial abdomen, I get the stomach over here, have the colon over here. Well, you have this artifact that even though it's not right in the view, it's robbing your echoes and taking away your power penetration down to the deeper structures. Whereas if I go over to the liver, I have nothing, none of that artifact interfering, so I can get all the way through. So that's what we call sweet spot scanning, right? We find the area where we have a good acoustic penetration and a good acoustic window in the near field. You always want to make sure your near field is clean so your far field is more diagnostic. If my near field has artifact in it, like here, my far field is not going to be diagnostic. So I have to find my way around that artifact. Okay, which is what why we do the S-step protocol and we work around the artifact. And so we get, we create a situation where the artifacts moved out of the way with manual maneuvers with the hand, right? And we get the colon out of the way and we create an acoustic window that is clean. So I have body wall, I have right kidney. If I have right kidney, then I drop the tail of the probe, I get the right adrenal gland because I have clean acoustic approach, right? So what we do, let's say we want to go after the right adrenal gland. So I'm going to alcohol up. Remember also, what is your probe sitting on? If it's sitting on hair or anything else, that's going to steal the echoes. So you want a nice continuous medium. So we put alcohol on the skin followed by gel. And I'm going to push down on the right kidney, push it up against the body wall, drop the tail of the probe, and then the right adrenal comes in. And as I twist and tilt a little bit, I'm going to optimize that right adrenal gland 
and I'm going to get it closer and closer to the body wall. So all I'm doing is a little twist, a little tilt, a little slide, and be able to get that right adrenal in there. And I can use the vena cava as an acoustic window, for example. So I go from right kidney to vena cava to right adrenal gland. All right. But the key is I have a clean near field, right? And I'm pushing everything out of the way to be able to get a good acoustic approach. So one, the manual sonogram, which is what's very, very important to move things out of the way. All right. The other thing is take an approach. If you have artifact in the near field, take an approach to where you don't. Okay. Get rid of that artifact, move it out of the way, use the claw, what we call the claw, the scanning hand and move it out of the way. Okay. The other thing is, is to push, right? So the weaker your machine is, the more you have to utilize these micro maneuvers to be able to penetrate into the deeper tissues, right? So when I used to scan mobile years ago, all the time, I had a five centimeter machine as far as the um, diagnostic value and with regards to depth, it was five centimeters. So I had to push everything to five centimeters. So if we look at this, I'm, I'm, I have a nice acoustic window. So I have a pretty decent image set down to 10 centimeters, right? But okay, that's nice, it's pretty. So now what do I do? I wanna make it prettier. So what I do is I push a little bit more on top of having a good solid resolution and look how the image just pops for you. So anytime you get a nice view, push a little bit more, turn five centimeters into four or eight centimeters into seven, that little push will push things out of the way and make your image pop even further. So with regarding the physics of ultrasound uh, and software, and different machines and so forth. I'm gonna pass it off to Jesse, Jessica Miller. She's uh, RDMS and our technical consultant, and she can talk to you all about what's important in the physics of the ultrasound machine itself. So uh, image quality is primarily a function of the processing of the machine, right? So when it comes back and becomes an electrical signal, there are many ultrasound machines that lack some infrequently used advanced features like M-Mode, which we're using all weekend, selectable transmit beam focusing, our focal point, hey, this is what I care about and where I want you to focus so I have good resolution, and things like spectral and color Doppler. So we already talked about that frequency being uh, from the sound wave, how thick the crystal is, right? And I talked to you about the strings on the guitar. So for this part of the image processing, I'm gonna use a little analogy here. So like I have my guitar, right? And let's say in an alternate world, I make it big and I get, they invite me to play Madison Square Garden, right? So I have my electric guitar and I have all my strings and all my frequencies and they say, okay, well, you have to bring your own sound system. So we recommend you buy this sound system. It's kind of expensive. But I could just go on Facebook Marketplace and my amp. My guitar is still going to plug into the amp. It's going to be fine, right? But it's not going to fill the nosebleeds, right? It's the sound, no matter how much I change my pickups or my gain on that guitar, the way the sound is processed is not going to be able to reach and fill that stadium the same way the one that they're recommending. And ultrasound machines are the same way because our images are being formed by sound waves. So the way in which they are processed matters. So if you're gonna scan it all, make sure you have a machine that can do it all, okay? Okay, hope these uh, tips help you today and uh, happy scanning.